Andrew Bridgen was presenting his uh, new gender and parental rights bill. Essentially, Andrew Bridgen has crossed over and he's no longer a Conservative MP. He's now with Lawrence Fox's Reclaim Party. And part of being in that is the main point seemed to be anti-COVID lockdown, anti-trans, <laughs> uh, um, and well, well and anti-woke that's the yeah, other one isn't it generally anti-wokeism and so this bill was basically arguing that teachers should be allowed to out children who have said that they might have some kind of con uh, questions over their gender mm. or how they're you know they might be experiencing gender dysphoria um and then in result to that mps were allowed to vote on it and it was thrown out yeah. all right yeah turns right to me sweating <laughs> <laughs> very well it, 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 it seems it seems bizarre that they're even that they're having, I suppose if Andrew Bridgen hadn't done this, they wouldn't be debating it in Parliament, like Andrew Bridgen is like the mechanism to mm -hmm. it. But the language around trans rights, around LGBT, LGBT rights in general, is to my mind becoming more and more regressive. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming quite more dangerous. Well, oh, there's that, like, absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I was going to say that, that key line, that gen uh, mutilation, genital yeah. mutilation, that, that's the sort of language he was Aye. using yesterday. And it's so out of whack mm -hmm. with what we're actually talking about here. But it's also, see, when he's talking about, like... Uh, and, and to be fair, the Tory party and the Prime Minister seem to also support this idea that parents should always be informed, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what the child wants about any as you say, any questions that they have or anything. Can you imagine if one of Lawrence Fox's wins are trans? This is a guy putting videos of, videos of himself burning the pride flag. Mm. Like, do you think that wins in a safe home? Mm. If you have just decided, I know, but the parents should know. Some parents are idiots. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. When it comes to this stuff, there's, there's no getting around it. And ultimately, it's got to be about, if you're serious about keeping Wayne safe, then you need to listen to the experts. And for the last 100 years, but even just the last 20 years, we've come on leaps and bounds with recognising just accept people when they tell you who they are. Mm. Like, that's it. Be supportive. In fairness to him, we can't confirm or deny whether the children are in his house. <laughs> well, we or, don't or know. Or he sees them. So. Yeah, we don't <laughs> know. <true. laughs> <laughs> Where, I mean, were you in the chamber for that yesterday, or did you, did you see bits of it? No, no, I've I seen clips of it, but... Uh, like, but Parliament's had a lot of these sort of bills over mm. the last few years coming through our Westminster Hall debates on, you know, it, it's all the usual dog whistles, you know, that were perverts and pedos and grooming children and all the rest of it. And, like, it, it always amazes me, particularly the likes of Andrew uh, Bridgeton when they say they're anti-woke. Because what does woke mean? <laughs> to me, woke means being sound, yeah. like mm. being a nice person, trying actively trying not to be an arsehole. That's what woke means. Like, why would you be anti-woke? Mm. I don't understand how that's a, like, a credible basis for any kind of political movement. Like, Does it worry you, that kind of language sort of bleeding into the chamber? Because yeah. that is like oh, totally. parliamentary yeah. time. Oh, it's terrifying. That. Terrifying. And I mean, as a lesbian myself, obviously I'm... It, it hits closer to home than it does other folk. And certainly I, I, I feel like I've been, you know, sounding the alarm, the warning alarms for at least since 2016 because I've seen this stuff coming. It, it, you ask anybody in the queer community, we've seen this coming down the line and it is slowly, bit by bit, our worst fears are coming true because suddenly you've got newspaper articles, all the rest of it, like, inundated with articles about trans people and, you know, the, the the trans movement and all the rest of it and how aggressive it is and such like. And it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. And at no point do they ever ask a trans person. Like, it, it, it upsets me so much that we talk about trans people in such a politicised way and we don't even invite them to be part of the conversation. Like, that in itself is the problem. You have to listen to folk when they're telling you what their experience is. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's definitely getting worse and it's scary. Mm. Definitely. How does it make you feel then when members of your own party are mm. anti-trans? Oh, yeah, no, it's uh, horrifying. I, I really struggle with it. Um, you know, but uh, ultimately people are responsible for their own views and for what they say. Um, but I, I've been... 
like put it this way, I, I'm very proud of the fact that when we get elected, the SNP <laughs> had so many gays in it. <laughs> like, <laughs> we made Parliament <laughs> one of the gayest Parliament, I think the gayest Parliament <laughs> in the world. And out of all my queer colleagues, like 99% of them are nothing but supportive, you know, and so well, that I, take, I take pride in the, the support. Yeah.